1992. Portions of the day's programming are reproduced by means of electrical transcriptions or tape recordings. <laughs> you can either take in the crystal I am the one and only crystal. The Chris Top Program. And I'm the one and only Chris Top, broadcasting live from Clarksville Customs House Museum, downtown Clarksville, Tennessee. How the hell are you doing, world? <laughs> See, so, I was waiting. I was trying to mess you I, up. I thought you were going to say your thing. I mean, no, well, you, you know, I, kept... I paused so I could mess you up. Oh. Well, yeah. congratulations. So you're not awake yet? <laughs> no. You know I'm you're going to freeze to death today. I know, but I brought a jacket and I'm not wearing shorts today. You, I'm got, wearing... the, you got the front pay. I've got the frop hat. So, I, but the but the I guess since you're wearing pants today instead of shorts, it'll it'll compensate. I don't know, and I'm going to dance around on the stage like I did yesterday. So. Whatever it takes Whatever to stay takes. warm. Whatever it takes to survive at the museum. Yes, at the museum. A day at the museum. Apocalypse. Isn't that a movie? Apocalypse. No? A day. No, it's the night at the, the museum. Night at the it's museum. like where, where all the cool stuff With comes ben to Stiller. life. Yes. Or so you think he's here? I wish. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> cool. Yeah. So okay. So so today is a is a it's a monumental day, I guess, because we have our first poet on the show. We do. All right, and I'm talking about Stephanie Bryant Anderson. So you're, you're really important when you have three names, I think. Yes. yes <laughs> so, so this is cool. I've only got one, and, there, and it's like two syllables. I'm done. <laughs> so what does that mean for me? Uh, so I have in my hand. Now, I don't even know how to say this, see? So, so, so the title, now if it was like a, a two-syllable title, I could say it. But how do you say that? It's monozygotic codependent. Mono. Zygotic, mm-hmm. codependent. Yes. Okay. So, what does that mean? Let's start with there. Talk to me like I'm in the fifth grade. I have a twin sister. Okay. Um, like we, identical. Yes, identical. Sweet. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what this whole book is about: mm-hmm. is being the submissive part of mm-hmm. the twins. Um, that's. Okay. So, when you wrote this book, now is this your first published piece or it, book? It's the first published book. Yes. Okay. So, but you've had some other published pieces, I guess. Or uh-huh. yeah. Okay. So, was this book when you wrote this? Was it um, more or less uh, a type of therapy for you, or was it just? Um... Yeah, I'd say it was pretty cathartic. We. Um, it, it took me a long, long time to kind of figure out. I guess the point of it. Um, I had, mm-hmm. you know, a bunch of a bunch of poems that I had written and. Um, I think once I finally figured out where it was I was writing from, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. So it made the writing the the rest of the poems a lot easier mm-hmm. at that point. Now, are you, are you strictly a poet or do you write other things as well? I have written um, fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have, um, I don't have the patience for it, I think. Gotcha. It does gotcha. take a lot of patience. Yeah. He's like, I just want to move on. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> now, how long did it take you to, to put this, pe- this book together? Um, some of these poems are even four and five years old. Okay. Um, and then some of them I wrote, you know, the week before it was published. Um, mm-hmm. so, or before the manuscript was accepted. Um, so it probably took me a total of four years, um, to get it to where I wanted to have it. So do you always walk around like with a, with a, a notepad in hand? Well, I don't guess we have to have notepads anymore. I guess we have, technology. we have notepads on our I phones. I have the memo in my phone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I'll use that or, you know, if I'm driving, I'll talk into the recorder on my phone, mm-hmm. something like that. Now, where do you find your inspiration? Is it just sort of everywhere or, you know, I know you said you have a couple of kids. I mean, I'm sure you draw inspiration from them, good or bad, yes, right? Yes, yes, 
<laughs> I do. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I think inspiration for me comes most from um, reading other poetry. Um, and then, of course, you know, reactions to situations, things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, how often do you get a, a chance to actually read your poems? I mean, are there are there things locally or in Nashville or anything where you actually can go and, and read your poetry? Um, I have read, this is probably like the fourth time. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I had set up a couple of um, events for the uh, Autism Foundation of Tennessee. Oh, cool. Um, and read um, then and then once at Austin P as well. Okay, it's pretty cool, I guess, when you guys get together and do that stuff. I yeah. mean, yeah. Um, and if 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 I wanted to buy a copy of your book, where would I go, uh, and how do I go about that? How much is your book? That kind of thing. Um, the book is eleven dollars. It was published by the Blue Hour Press um, out of Oregon, um, and their website. Um, you can buy it there, and then you can also buy it from my website. It's a WordPress website, mm -hmm. Stephanie Bryant Anderson. Okay, okay. And do you offer like a digital copy too, or is it, are they all physical? Just print. And if somebody orders it, do you sign them all? Depending on where it's shipping from. Okay, okay. Um, you know, if somebody orders from the publisher, um, if they really wanted a signature, the publisher mm -hmm. would uh, send it to me, and then I can sign it and then mail it out. Gotcha. Or if they order directly from you, then of course you can sign it. Yes. So would you write something like, Chris, you're really cool, and then, and then do that? Completely. Chris Sweet. isn't that cool. Sweet. Sweet. We'll just, make it up just, as we yeah. go. <laughs> What? I was what? Just, I just wanted her to know the truth about you. <laughs> now, do you uh, do you ever write stuff that I know? I know you you write some stuff, and then in in the past when I've written things or when I create things, they seem really good, and then I'll and look back <laughs> in a few months or a year later and be like, man, what was I thinking? Did that, I write crappy. this like when I was asleep? That, or yeah. that usually happens when I wake up in the morning <laughs> and I go back and I look <laughs> and I'm like, what? Right. Really, what was going on here? Um, you know, but that's the beauty of editing. <laughs> sure, sure. So I'm, so I'm guessing you gave everything at least a few days to gel in your mind before you put them in the book. <laughs> right? <laughs> Bruh. I'm worried now. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of... Um, <laughs> I'm kind of an impulsive person. Sure. Um, no, I would say most of them had some time to gel for a okay, little bit. Okay, so you're good. <laughs> yeah. So you're good. So everything in here, at least you, you like. I'm happy with. Okay, yes. good, good, yes. good. What kind of um, feedback have you been getting uh, from your book? Um, <laughs> the, the title is complicated. The title um, is complicated, but it's, it makes it interesting. It, you know, to me, it was it was the most honest title that I could go with. Mm -hmm. Um other feed i mean you know i've gotten i've gotten good feedback um it's funny you know when when you read reviews and somebody i like seeing the their perspective of what it is that i'm writing mm -hmm. so it's well, i can't wait to read it, it. I'm, I'm i'm really excited uh well, to read it you know it's it's about living in pairs really mm -hmm. because that's all i know mm -hmm. um you know when i of course was born it was me and my sister and then after that it was you know boys here and there mm -hmm. um and then it, it's turned into me and my children you know us together so i'm the person who doesn't know how to live outside of a pair mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what the whole collection is about yeah so so most anybody can read can read at least a couple of poems in here and, and relate mm -hmm. i would think mm -hmm. to them yeah, yeah. Uh, now do you have um, any favorites in the book that um, somebody would need to read like as soon as they got the book um because it's not like you have to read from you know start to finish. You can skip around, right? Yes, yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, there's there's a few that are my favorites in the poem or in the book that um, were the hardest to place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in certain journals and things like that. Um, and then there's some that like I read them and I think, why did I just read that in a crowd? Because that was very like it's a very vulnerable type of poem. Mm -hmm. Um, and so those are the ones for me that are kind of admissions to things that happen. And it's, it's kind of scary, but it's good mm -hmm. to put out there, I think. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. I think, um, you know, it takes, excuse me, but it takes balls, I think, sometimes mm -hmm. to publish stuff like that and get it out there. Right. You know, whether you're a songwriter or a poet or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's good that you have this because otherwise mm -hmm. you'd be shooting walls and stuff. Probably so. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like, you need to be honest. Or taped up I, yeah. in a room somewhere, probably. And I like that, like. <laughs> That, you know, it's okay to read, like, vulnerable poems and stuff. Because, I mean, you need to be honest with yourself and t to everybody else feel like, this is how I'm feeling and mm -hmm. I can't do anything about it. Well, it's right? cool because you know other people are, go through this stuff, too. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to know that you're not alone. Right. Or, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing about poetry for me. I read poetry for validation, mm -hmm. you know. 
Well, what do you do, like, say, if um, say the, the kids are with a babysitter one day or something, and you've got some free time? Like, what do you, what do you like to do for fun? Um, kickboxing. Kickboxing. Cool. Yeah. Oh. That's so cool to me. That is kick So I don't butt. need to, like, I don't need to sneak up behind you and scare you, is what that you're is saying. That is kick butt. Because I was going to do that after we were done, but I'm not going to do that now. Yeah, probably not. No, okay. Because no, no. you'd, like, um, turn around and give me a roundhouse kick right in the face. Um, maybe right in the gut. Okay, okay. That's yeah. just as bad. Yeah. <laughs> If you can mess yeah. my face up, this is radio. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, so I, I enjoy, um, you know, kickboxing. I um, I know it's weird. I like to clean. I, <laughs> do, you, um, do you kickbox while you clean? Because that would be I interesting. You could do a video it. on that. <laughs> Healthy cleaning. Right. Yeah. Where do you, uh, where do you go kickboxing at? Is it like um, some underground it, thing, no. like a fight club? No. Can you talk about it? The no, fight no, club. <laughs> It, it, title boxing is where I, where I okay go. okay yeah. so how long have you been doing that um since mm, february or march okay now do your kids go with you i mean do they know how to kickbox okay. a little bit so jude is not at all interested my 10 year old mm -hmm. um my little one my mm -hmm. six-year-old however um he's been into boxing since he was probably a year old um, wow he loves it he's been a boxer for halloween <laughs> um and so i recently talked to them about you know him him starting with me so i think the next uh -huh. trip that we go he's i told him he could start with warm-ups and things because mm -hmm. i don't know if he can last the whole hour with it <laughs> most of the time i hardly do <laughs> now do you guys uh do you sit around a lot at the house and do you actually you know do you have a chance to read to your kids because that, that's kind of what i'm picturing you know, yeah, yeah, maybe you don't use do. the babysitter or the TV as a babysitter too much. Not too much. Maybe, yeah. No. It's okay to do um, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, and they're always on their Kindles and whatever right. those things are. But, mm -hmm. um, but we do take time. Um, we try to get like 20 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's nice for me because it's when the whole house is quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when they're not sitting down reading, it's not at all quiet. Sure. Um, so we do try to do that at least um, through the week, not necessarily on weekends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. And I, I'm guessing you're pretty involved with the community and stuff, too. I try to be. Yeah. 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 That's a good way, to, I guess, to network your book. Yes. For sure. Yes. Readings definitely. are definitely the best way to, to mm -hmm. sell books. Now, speaking of books and reading and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, are you going to read a couple for us today? Sure. What, what did you What did you pick out to read? Um, I think the first one I want to read. Um, it's called the Generation Dress, um, mm -hmm. and it's about my my great grandmother, my grandmother, and my mother because identical twins run in every single generation of our family, um, and so. Wow. You know, the, the the gist of it is, you know... Is that normal when there's twins? I mean... The, no. No. No, for, um, for uh, fraternal twins, they typically um, are... They are generational, and it typically skips a generation. Um, so, but identical twins are not supposed to... It's not supposed to be a pattern. It's supposed to be pretty random. <laughs> Just a random thing, mm -hmm. yeah. But we've got them in every single generation. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 Um, so it started with my great grandmother who came over from Germany. Okay. Um, and then she had she had a lot of kids, but anyways, then we How many went did she to have? Do you uh, know? like fifty. <laughs> 50? I say a lot, but it's fifty <laughs> kids. Was, I think there were six of them. Um, yeah. To me, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, and then my grandmother had four kids. She had three boys and a girl, which was my mother who had twin girls and mm -hmm. a girl. So the. The thing was, is my little sister was supposed to have twin boys and a girl because it also alternated boys and girls. Well, my little sister had her first child and then went and got her tube side. <laughs> she was <laughs> like, done. ain't going to happen. No more. <laughs> Not twin boys. Right. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> this, this poem is basically um, living up to, to that there. <laughs> okay. All right. So the generation dress. They shape the dress material like a shoulder. Mall, me mall, mother. Must out a design, still empty of its spine, while I, who made four, slipped my arm in. I wanted to switch the angles, make the dress into what I wanted. The oldest smelled like winter snow and shuffled to and from her sewing kit like Germany in her polyester clothes. With her glasses slipping from her nose, she cut the peach fabric to mimic the thin, flimsy pattern and grew my chin out of her wooden boat. Maul iron, ironed the pieces down, hummed in unison with the steam. She was a magician woman born with silver fox hair that she wore long and loose. Her ass pressed against her daughter, whose dark hair is like mine. Meemaw stooped at my feet, taking measurements, a beauty born in late fall. 
she could make the moon fall even still with her crooked fingers. September 1976, when I crouched from below the earth's spine, the first time I saw her, I knew love. The hem's needles scratched at my legs. When I tried the skirt on, clawed like the cat, meow, she scratched through the needles clutched in her teeth. The third is up and down, her moods like a slipped zipper. She wore green like a sea monster and made love to her husband when he wasn't home. Though mother cooked out of boxes, her scissors cut well. The pieces of dress grew together, my shoulders and neck, the bodice and pleats, creating the shape of a woman, the shape I did not yet have. When I grew into a woman, I wanted legs and an ass thinner than their legs and asses, perkier breasts than their baby-sucked breasts, and smaller hips. As they finished, I stared at the photographs of twins on my Mimal's walls, my uncles, my great aunts, my sister and I, all identical. With cooked eggs falling from my mouth, I tried the dress on. How cool, how descriptive is that, and how relatable <laughs> so is that? so cool. Yeah, when we were younger. Any uh, woman can hear that and, yes. and relate to that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we always um, were asked to do, we were always asked to be the flower girls in every wedding, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so my my mom, my grandmother, and my great-grandmother all got together and sewed us a dress. Mm -hmm. um, and we called it the generation dress because it was all of them working together to sew it. How so. cool, how valuable is that to yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Wow. Mm -hmm. Do you have pictures of that? Um, I don't. We still have the dress, though. You need to take um, some pictures and, yeah. and tweet them to me or something. Yeah, I want to see okay. it. All right. You, don't just say yes and I not promise. do it. You're probably going to have to remind me. I am close to 40. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll remind you because I want to see the dress. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So now we got that settled. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, what's your what superhero power would you want to have if you could have any superhero oh, power? God. I like to just um, throw that out there. Invisibility. So, invisi and that's a are you being pervy? Is that a Are you being pervy, <laughs> you being pervy with that? You want to see people? No? <laughs> Why yeah, do you want to be invisible? I, I want to listen in on people's conversations. <laughs> So you want to like know what they're just talking, so so you can be kind of in on the gossip or like what they're saying about you. Or um, I think it. I don't know. I think I would want to. I like to know what motivates people. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't know. I think they'd be cool. That's kind of cool. Now, if you had an opportunity to sit down with anybody, and this could be anybody throughout history, uh, this person could be living or dead. Who would it be? You got five oh, minutes. Goodness. A five minute cup of coffee. I'm putting you on the spot. This is a tough question. It is a tough question. Um, I think I would go with Russian poet Anna Akhmatova. Tell me about her, because I don't have any clue who that is. Um, <laughs> she, um, <laughs> See, I was afraid she, she was going to say somebody I didn't somebody know. Somebody we didn't right. know. Why yeah. couldn't you say Edgar Allan Poe? Then I could be like, oh, I know him. I know who um, he is. Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go back to the Russian um, chick. You know, <laughs> I think what, what I like about Anna Akhmatova, you know, is that her, one of the things that happened was she was, her son was kidnapped, um, in Russia and he was imprisoned and she went and she stood outside the gates in Leningrad um, waiting for him to come out <clears throat> and she talks about um, there's a, a biography that I've read of hers um, it's called Anna of all the Russias and she I think she didn't feel bonded as a mother to her son yet she went and stood outside for 17 months um, begging for his release um, and I think to me that just speaks volumes. Um, even when, you know, when my son was first born, I was terrified of him and they mm -hmm. handed him to me and I thought, I don't want him, um, because I was so scared. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think I just felt a, a connection to her and to her writing. Um, once how interesting is that? Because the way, you, I mean, I'm sure there are lots of parents that maybe wonder and they're not going to say it out loud. Right. You know, do I really love my kids enough? <laughs> right. You know, and then and then when you're you're put in this situation where where you almost have to, they're not really set at, setting out to prove it, but they do mm -hmm. uh, prove it. Right. So that's really interesting. Yeah, um, that's really cool. Because um, mm -hmm. I've I've often wondered that it's like you know, do I do enough? Um, you know, as a father, or did I do enough as a mm -hmm. father? You mm -hmm. know, so that's that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so a few years down the road, say five, ten years down the road. Are we talking more books published, or what are we? What are we talking? How far do you want to advance with this? Is it more or less uh, a hobby thing? Is it is it something that you passionately want to be your career? What are you looking for? Um, I wouldn't say career. I don't think anybody can expect to write poetry and make a career. Mm -hmm. um, 
I just want to keep writing and be happy with what I'm writing. Mm -hmm. Do I hope to put out more collections? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, But first and foremost, I just want to write something and be done with it and say that's exactly what I meant to say. Sure. And that's probably, that's important, I guess, when you're a writer. I mean, you Mm -hmm. you know, you you write something and, yeah. Uh, See, I'm learning stuff. Yeah. (laughs) I'm learning stuff because you're putting this in perspective for me and I need to know My mind is just like blown from the last, that that poem that you wrote. I was just like. She's still stuck on that. I'm still like thinking about it. She's five minutes behind today. Yeah. That's just how she rolls sometimes. Are you going to read one more for us? Sure. I would love that. Sweet. Okay. Now, what's, now give me some background on this one, too. Um, this one is, this is the one that I typically read and go, why am I reading this in public? Because it's, it's, um, it's a poem about my youngest son um, who got upset because I told him he couldn't have candy. Um, mm-hmm. And when I told him that, he told me that he was going to go kill himself with a knife and scare mm-hmm. me. And so, of course, it's in a poem. Okay. <laughs> Um, So this one is called He Carries Me in the Biology of His Body. Okay. I wrap the uncooked lamb in white paper to place back in the fridge. The blood weeps through. I imagine the knife, a plunging warship, the cesarean that cut him out of me, the anodyne. Like an umbilical, the onion-shaped corpuscles of my blood attached to him fill him with my phantoms. Before dinner, I tell him no candy. Then I am going to kill myself with a knife and I will scare you. He believes the knife will bring relief, the blood, the slowing heart. At times, his eyes are small rooms whose lights are out, a darkness that even the cold doesn't reach. I have loved him from the inside, but love alone does not help us. Spoiling him, I gather him in the place where our blood gathers, and I put him in my bed to sleep. We are drifting off together. I worry my blood is not warm enough. Yeah, yeah, pretty deep. Wow. <laughs> when you write stuff, do you when you're finished, do you ever go like, "Man, that's really good." I Man, I kicked ass on that I mean, one. You ever do that? It'll happen yeah, once or twice. Yeah. Yeah. Or do you, or sometimes I guess maybe they, you sit there with it and it's like, "Is this any good or not?" And then it kind of grows on you. Um, I don't know. I think I go back and forth so much. I mean, it, yeah. unfortunately, self doubt is really. Uh, I'm full of it. Um, so. <laughs> It's it's hard sometimes to look at a poem, and sometimes I'll read it, and but then I'll put it away for mm-hmm. you know months, and I'll go back to it and be like, you know, it wasn't really that bad. You shouldn't mm-hmm. beat yourself up over it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I am always pushing um, to become a better writer, and for mm-hmm. me, that's what it's about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's cool. I'm so I'm so happy to know you. It's nice to know somebody that uh, that does this stuff. I, I feel like it makes me a better person. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it totally makes there... everyone a better person to know yeah. me. <laughs> See, there you go. There you go. She knows. She's just sure. She's not conceited. She just knows. She just knows these things. Now, if if um if a, a younger person came up to you and said, you know, you know, Stephanie, I just I really want to be a writer. Um, I know it's probably not going to pay the bills. I know I'm probably going to be poor the rest of my life. Should I do it? Should I write? Yes. You know what? Well, how how do I go about even getting started with this? Like what? You know, I think the most important thing that a writer can do is read. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> It's it's going to help you grow as a person. It helps you with different perspectives. Um, and then, you know, with the writing itself, you get to know who you are. Um, and I know that sounds kind of basic, but it's kind of hard sometimes to figure out who you are as a person, especially when you've got someone on this earth that looks just like you mm-hmm. um, and you two are constantly, you know, compared to one another. Um, so I think Never that thought writing about has, that. Yeah. yeah okay. Writing is... is it's my thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's helped me to, to figure out who I am as a person and what I like and what I don't like. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs their own thing because when you're like compared to somebody else, it's like you just don't get yourself. Right. And it's like, right. and who I, am I? Exactly. And, I, you know, you certainly don't have to be a twin to feel that. Um, I know that, you know, young girls feel this looking at a magazine every day, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, and I think that it's important to step away from all of that and, and give time to yourself. Mm-hmm. If you weren't writing poetry, what would you be writing? Oh, goodness. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> rap, rap songs? Rap, definitely. That's what I, that was my yeah. guess, actually, yes. too. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I say, I've done fiction a little bit, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not very good at it. I don't have the patience for it. Um, what type of fiction? I don't know. It was just a story based on some girl. So... But, um, I, yeah, I don't know. I'd, That's fine. When can we expect the next book? 
I don't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever. Well, I'm sure you've already got some um, some I, some stuff together. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I've got probably I don't know ten or twelve poems mm-hmm. um, together that I like um, that I'm gonna work on getting more, mm-hmm. um, but that I've done since completing this collection. So. Okay, and how many usually go into a into a book before you publish um, it? You know, it kind of depends. There's a chapbook, which is usually about up to thirty poems. Um, mm-hmm. Then you've got your your full length um, books. Um, I'm kind of hoping to make this one a full length. I've got a little project on the side for a chapbook, um, so there's kind of multiple things going on at once right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's cool. I mean, you need to keep me in the know and right? keep me informed whenever you write new stuff. Okay. All right, so I can talk about it. It's a deal. So I can read it. So you're not going to forget me. And we're Twitter buddies yeah. for life, too, right? BFF. No, right. we would be, what is that, TFF? T- TBFL. Twitter friends for life. Twitter friends for life. Yeah. Or TBFF. TBF. Yeah, for life. For L. I don't know. You're the writer. Come on. Help me out. I don't know these things. But it's been fun having you on the show. I very much appreciate being here. Did you have fun? Or was it awkward? Because I, no, I, I get awkward cool. with people a lot. And I don't Chris is a very awkward person. I yeah, feel awkward, awkward just sitting here. <laughs> she does. Him. That's why she sits over there and leans this way. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it's like, you're so awkward, dude. Can't help it. I don't know. Yeah. I think awkward people do well together. <laughs> so that's right. We're so, both awkward. So now you're coming back. You're coming back on Saturday. Yes. Um, and I, I forget what time. But it's going to be sometime after 2 and before 5. So, yeah. yeah. I think it was like 2.35, something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. It's got weird. Those are all tentative. Gotcha. Yeah, because I don't know what's going to happen. I I don't have any clue. Um, So you'll be back Saturday. So if somebody wants to come by and maybe grab a copy of your book, you'll have some extra copies here. Yes. And I think we're going to have some as um, door prizes as well. Uh, that we're going to give away uh, toward the end during the entertainment. We're going to yeah. make like gift bags. Yeah. We're going to pass out tickets and give away prizes and stuff like that. So so that should be fun. Mm-hmm. So they could actually win her book. It will be Baus. Yeah. And I'll say the title again. <laughs> Monozygotic Codependent. Monozygotic Codependent. Yes. All right. Stephanie Bryant Anderson. Cool. And you're going to like Boom. personalize this for me, right? The autograph and stuff? Yes. So we're good? Okay. Yes. Okay. We're good. Okay. I'm trying Do to I be- get my name put in there too? Oh, so come like, on. Sweet. Come on. Yeah, you know what? It's not all about you, <laughs> babe. <laughs> so frustrating. Kidding. You want to take us out first? Heck yeah. All right, you go for it. Boom. Thank you. Thank you yes, very thank much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Chris Stop program. And until we broadcast again, please remember this. Life is good, and we're gone. When I think of Magnolia Emporium, I think of Randy. I mean, we could talk about how wonderful he is at what he does. But the one thing that sets this design firm apart from any other one is the simple fact that Randy's just a good guy. Honesty, integrity, and a big heart. Isn't that what you're really looking for? Give Randy a call. 704-248-6808. Magnolia Emporium. We want your space to reflect your success. Things might be looking grim I guess it's time